nimble style. It enables a man to climb like a lizard. YouTube, this is the hard bastard with some uh, fake news to look out for. There's a lot of shit right now being talked about. Steve Bannon, I would say if Bannon leaves the Trump administration, that is a very bad sign. Uh, however, um, what is being reported about him is a bit of bullshit. We had Politico yesterday, uh, or sorry, that is the, the fifth, say that Bannon was ousted from National Security Council. So you would think that this would mean that he was removed from the National Security Council, right? Okay, well, let's, let's watch. The Trump administration initially faced a bipartisan wave of complaints over a political official serving in a national security role. White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon has been removed from an important seat on the National Security Council. A posting that had stirred controversy for placing one of President Donald Trump's top political hands in a key national security position. The change represents the first real dimin excuse me, diminution? What? Diminution, I believe, of authority for Bannon, who has been cast as an all powerful whisperer to Trump by the legacy media, by the way, in the administration's first 75 days, mocked by his critics as President Bannon. In recent weeks, Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor, has asked searching questions, sometimes for hours, of inside and outside advisors about the White House's performance and complained about Bannon in particular, according to people who have spoken with Kushner. Kushner, a one-time New York Democrat, and Bannon, a hard-right nationalist, have clashed as Kushner has told people that Bannon's desire to deconstruct the government is hurting the president. One person familiar with Kushner's thinking says Kushner believes Bannon is more of a problem than Rents Priebus, the chief of staff. Big fight is between the nationalists and the West Wing Democrats, one senior, senior administration official said. The White House tried to downplay the significance of Bannon's removal from the NSC. It went unannounced by the press office, depicting him as simply moving on after successfully completing limited tasks. It's not like this is a major shakeup, said another administration official. But Bannon's exit, revealed in a Federal Register filing and confirmed by multiple White House officials, is perceived to represent a significant long-term increase in authority for H.R. McMaster, Trump's new national security advisor, who now has greater authority over the council's agenda without one of Trump's closest aides watching closely over him. McMaster won, one NSC official said. Vice President Mike Pence said Steve Bannon's ouster was not a, quote, demo motion and said it was a very routine change. With H.R. McMaster as our national security advisor and the president's action adding the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, adding the director of national intelligence, and moving a couple of our senior personnel off the National Security Council just simply represents a very routine evolution of the national security team around the president, Pence said in an interview with Fox News Wednesday night. Pence added that both Bannon and Tom Bossert, who serves as Trump's homeland security advisor and whose role was also reduced, continue to be highly valued members of this administration. One White House official said Bannon was placed on the NSC to babysit Trump's first national security advisor, Michael Flynn, who resigned in mid-February after misleading Vice President Mike Pence about his conversation with Russian Ambassador Sergei, Sergei Kislyak. This official said Bannon's role was also to ensure that the NSC was de de operationalized following the Obama administration. That job is done, the official said. It's not like he's been in principal committee meetings constantly saying to McMaster, you can't do this, you can't do that. Another of the officials said that hasn't happened. Bannon had not been a regular attendee of NSC principals meetings. One person said he attended one meeting. Another said he hadn't attended any. Some cautioned not to make too much of Bannon's removal. I get a sense that people are, are going ding dong, the witch is dead, said Eric Edelman, who served as undersecretary of defense for policy in the George W. Bush administration. The only thing he doesn't appear to have is a seat at the NSC principals committee, and it's not clear how important that will be. 
The immediate reading by several longtime NSC officials and experts was that the policymaking body is reverting to a much more traditional structure with the National Security Advisor in the driver's seat and meetings attended by cabinet heads, top intelligence officials, and the chairman of Joint Chiefs of, Chiefs of Staff, who in the Flynn approach was not even designated as a regular member, even as Bannon was. It really reflects well on H.R. McMaster, who has orchestrated all the key moves behind the scenes in advance of announcing them and getting their approval. David Rothkopf, author of Two Histories of the NSC, said in an interview. That is a sign of a smart, effective bureaucrat and leader. This restores the traditional structures to the NSC. It is putting in place a professional team of national security advisors. It gives McMaster more authority and restores the roles of the military and intelligence leadership. Lawmakers of both parties welcome the return to a more traditional NSC structure. I'd be And just remember what we're talking about, Steve Bannon being removed from the NSC, his seat taken from the NSC, the NSC. There is no more, there is no longer a seat at the table for him. Just remember, that's what we're talking about here. I'd be very pleased that he would not be on the National Security Council. Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland, the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said on Capitol Hill. My hope is that he would have no role in government at all and would be completely out. Senate Arms Service Chairman John McCain said downgrading Bannon was a good move, and he praised the reinstatement of the Joint Chiefs Chairman as a permanent member of the Security Council. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs should be in a permanent position, so I think it's the right thing to do, but it's the decision of the President, McCain said. I said at the time that I didn't think a political advisor should be a member of that body because it's never been, so I think it's the right thing to do. And a representative, Aida, Anna Ross Lithentine, former chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, tweeted, Steve Bannon's removal from the National Security Council is welcome news. The removal of Bannon also raised questions of whether more changes are in the works, in particular the fate of KT McFarland, who was brought in as Flynn's deputy and remains the number two at the NSC. Trump loves McFarland, so I'm not sure McMaster can fire her, an NSC official said. One NSC source said no additional staffing changes are planned to the agency in the near term saying that the NSC intelligence director Ezra Cohen Watnick would remain in that post. McMaster has tried to reassign Cohen Watnick to a different position last month, but was overruled by Trump after Bannon and Kushner intervened. Cohen Watnick subsequently became a key player in the controversy over leaked intelligence when it was revealed that he and another White House aide provided House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez with the evidence reportedly showing that communications from Trump's team were intercepted in foreign surveillance by U.S. intelligence. In addition to Bannon, one other change was made Wednesday. Thomas Bossert, an assistant to the president for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, held a co-equal status with Flynn when he was National Security Advisor. He is now subordinate to McMaster in another sign of the former general's empowered role in the Trump White House. The changes were not welcome among some Trump loyalists. Flynn's son, Michael Flynn Jr., tweeted that Flynn slash Bannon most loyal to to Donald Trump, both out at NSC, using the president's initials, and he complained that McMaster won't say radical Islam. Is the White House serious about defeating our en enemy, Flynn Jr. wrote. A day later, ladies and gentlemen, a day later, Trump top advisor Steve Bannon attends NSC meeting one day after being, quote, removed. <laughs> One day after what was demonstrably one of the most covered stories by the media focused on the removal of Steve Bannon, President Trump's top advisor from the National Security Council. He attended a council meeting. The Washington Examiner reported on Thursday, White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon has attended the first meeting of the National Security Council after he was removed from the Principals Committee Wednesday, the Examiner story said. Now, what's the examiner saying he was removed from the principal's committee? Despite the headline about Bannon's removal, most media outlets included the fact that the change on the council only meant Bannon was no longer a permanent member on the council, but that he retained top security clearance and could attend council meetings. If you are in the meeting, do you not have a seat? Bannon is still permitted to go to NSC meetings, Fox News reported on Wednesday. CNBC reported that Bannon could attend council meetings by invitation of the president or H.R. McMaster, Trump's national security advisor. He is one of the president's closest and most trusted advisors, a White House source told CNBC when asked why Bannon attended. I wonder also if one of the reasons you're seeing all this shit about Kushner versus Bannon is because, I mean, you remember previously, what was it, a couple months ago where they tried to put... Previous and Bannon against each other. Now they're trying to put Bannon and Kushner um, against each other. 
Uh, with that said, there are a lot of Trump supporters uh, that don't like Kushner and want him fired. Um, that's never going to happen, I would say. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that Trump's never going to fire Kushner. Um, but what is most important without question? Bannon has to stay on. If Bannon is removed from Trump's administration, that is a bad sign for Trump supporters and for people who are more America first. Um, but that, that, that hasn't happened. Here's another interesting article. It's a total lie, says Steve Bannon, following reports he threatened to quit over National Security Council demotion as he insists there is zero chance he is going anywhere. So I would I'd say it's important to hold him to these words because, like I said, if he is removed from the administration, that is a bad sign. That hasn't happened. And just like when um, there was two instances of this, right when the Trump transition took over, where the legacy media completely made up fake news stories about the transition and what Trump was doing. It's the same deal with the Steve Bannon story in regards to the NSC. Now, um, the Kushner versus Bannon stuff, I am still in the process of researching. I don't know if it's worth making a video over. I, I find some of it to be pretty much just manufactured bullshit. The one thing that I do find interesting though is that it does seem like uh, a business venture that Jared Kushner is involved in uh, is funded in some way by George Soros. And um, I, I forget what the details are. Uh, it, it's not like George Soros is directly giving Jared Kushner money, but he's involved in a project. And um, that's interesting. And so I definitely understand why Trump supporters are giving Jared Kushner the side eye. Um, but really at this juncture, I'm still looking into it and I am not sure yet. I know it's the top trend on Twitter right now, but I, I don't really, I'll make a video if I definitely think that Bannon and Kushner are at war and that Bannon's on his way out. If, if that's legitimate, that's, that's news. Um, Trump supporters not liking Jared Kushner. That's really not news. I understand why they don't like him. He, he tends to be, well, he's a Democrat and he tends to be more on the globalist side. Um, and so if Bannon is removed, then yeah, I think you can make the argument that the globalists, uh, are winning, but I don't think we're there yet. But I do like how, one thing I really will say, I really like how Trump supporters are, not afraid to go against Trump and are loud and vocal already. We have two examples of this, one in regards to Syria. And I mean, Syria hoax, the hashtag uh, was, I'm surprised that Twitter allowed that one, but they did. And they are allowing the fire Kushner hashtag. I think the reason Twitter allowed it is because they like to see what they view as like fights amongst Trump supporters. But I think the one thing that the left doesn't realize is, at least from my observation, maybe I'm wrong, but I am seeing Trump supporters completely disagree with each other, but not call each other racist homophobes or say that you're a bad person. I mean, look at the debate that just happened with um, Paul Joseph Watson and Bill Mitchell. They both completely disagree with each other on Syria. They had a very good productive debate. Um, and I walked away from that. I don't agree with either of them either. I think Mitchell is too like, oh, this is great. I think this move that Trump did bombing Syria is going to go down as one of the greatest moves in American history. I don't agree with that. But on the other hand, I don't agree with Paul Joseph Watson, which is the, I won't, I won't say he's saying all is lost. The globalists have won, but he's definitely, he's definitely not happy with this. Um, but I think any sort of debate, no matter what the subject, if two people can walk away from that still being cordial and respecting each other, that must be, that's fantastic. So that's a good sign. Anyway, let's, let's go into this. President Donald Trump's chief strategist, Steve Bannon, denied on Thursday that he considered quitting his White House job following his removal from a key National Security Council committee. And again, as we learned, he wasn't removed. He was reassigned. Uh, and from what, what I understand, it was planned. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. 
This is a total line, Bannon said, pushed by Democrats getting crushed on policy. The former chairman of Breitbart News is seen as Trump's populist conservative confidant and a balance to more centrist Republicans in the White House. His absence would dramatically swing the Oval Office away from the base that elected him. By the way, if you were asking me if I had to pick a side, do I agree with the Trump supporters that want Kushner fired? Um, no, I want them both in there. I, I, I don't want just Bannon types in there. I want both in there. I want Trump to have both sides of, of, uh, of the issue in front of him. I, I agree more with Bannon in regards to um, putting America first. And I am against globalism. But I do think that if you – either Trump is able to – have convictions in his beliefs and is able to have people around him that disagree with him and he can function like that which is what i believe of him or he can be talked into anything and he is completely helpless and needs only uh nationalists around him i don't believe that that's the case but we will see i mean all of these things are going to come to a head and we are going to get a picture of what is going to happen that's what's fascinating about the very beginnings of a administration um if that happens if bannon is ousted okay uh that's going to be a sign that uh the globalists are getting to trump and that's not good at all um on the other hand just like with the bannon previous thing i think that it it's nothing. It turned out to be nothing. And I think the same with this. Now, that doesn't mean that I am uh, in support of Kushner and think that he should be doing all of the things that he's been doing. Uh, on the other hand, it's funny how that intersects, that criticism intersects with the left's criticism of Kushner from a few days ago when they were doing hit piece after hit piece on Kushner. And the only shit they had on Kushner was his inexperience. That's really all they have on him. They, he's inexperienced and he shouldn't be sitting in on these meetings. You know, uh, how are you going to get experience if you uh, don't sit in on these meetings? The other thing is this. The media has to make up its mind. Is Steve Bannon the shadow president or is Jared Kushner the shadow, shadow president? Um, but I think it's much to do about nothing. But I do think that I do understand why Trump's more nationalist and understand when I say nationalist, I'm not saying white nationalists, I'm saying nationalists. And what I mean by a nationalist is people who believe that uh, America is in a very fucked up position right now and should focus on itself and get the country back on track when it comes to jobs and shit. That's not white nationalism. There is a fucking difference. Anyway. Let's get back to this. Uh, the former chairman of Breitbart News is seen. Oh, I already read that. Uh, asked point blank if there's any chance he's leaving the administration. Bannon replied zero. That's very significant because uh, if he leaves, then you know it's bad. Bannon was removed Wednesday from the National Security Council Principals Committee, but he's still part of the larger, larger council. I don't understand why up here you say that he was removed from the committee, but whatever. I think... Maybe I'm being nitpicky here, but why don't you just from the beginning say he was removed from the principal's committee? Why leave any possible room for people to run with this and say, yeah, he was removed from the NSC. He wasn't removed from the NSC. He was removed from the principal's committee. He can still go to meetings and he did just attend a meeting. That It, it does not sound true when you say he's lost his seat at the table. That's not true. Fox News floated a theory on air that Trump had grown wary of Bannon's increasing public profile as a key behind the scenes power. Total speculation. We are also told, though, that maybe the president wasn't particularly happy with the way Bannon had been grabbing the limelight. And that may have also played into all of this. Correspondent John Roberts reported, when did he do this? How could you possibly fuck with Trump's limelight? Trump's limelight is 24 7 100 percent of the time because steve bannon got a cover on time magazine i don't think trump's that petty now make no mistake i think trump does care about shit like that but i also think he's halfway reasonable i don't think he's a child and i don't think he really gives a fuck but we'll see we're all gonna see who's right and who's wrong it's fascinating right now i'm not gonna say who they are i'm gonna you're gonna find out who i'm talking about in the end but there are two people that i have a lot of respect for that are generally right about shit 
on completely opposite sides of a lot of this shit. And one of them is going to be proven right and one of them is going to be proven wrong. The one proven wrong, I have too much respect to be like, oh, now this person can no longer be trusted. That's bullshit. But the person who turns out to be right, I'm going to give them some props because um, it takes a lot of skill to be able to weed through the bullshit and make, I won't say predictions, but make, um, I guess, read the tea leaves. Because this isn't really more an issue of making predictions. It's an issue of assessing information and then just saying what you think is going to happen based off of that. Although he's far more camera shy than some of the other members of Trump's inner circle, Bannon has given a series of interviews where he revealed and defended his nationalistic philosophy. Darkness is good. Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, Satan, that's power. <laughs> He's such a troll. Bannon told the Hollywood Reporter, <laughs> after the elections, he helped engineer. It only helps us when the media and liberals get it wrong, when they're blind of who we are and what we're doing. That is so fucking hilarious. He added that the media is just a circle of people talking to themselves who have no idea, who have no fucking idea what's going on, which is why they couldn't better pre predict Trump's coming. Um, Bannon told the New York Times in January, the media should be embarrassed and humiliated and keep its mouth shut and just listen for a while. Trump's decision to add Bannon, one of his top political advisors, and the driver behind his nationalistic agenda to the NSC's Principles Committee created a stir among the foreign policy establishment and lawmakers who considered it to be a, a politicization of the panel. Uh, or, yeah, His position is no longer listed among those on the committee, according to a new filing on, in the Federal Register. Assistant to the President for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, Tom Bossert, also was downgraded. Uh, middle right. President Trump ignored a question from a reporter on Wednesday while meeting with Jordan's King Abdullah about why he removed Bannon from the council. I want you to quote this, Ben, and continued. The media here is the opposition party. They don't understand this country. They still do not understand why Trump is the president of the United States. The Washington Post reported last week how Bannon made his fortune as the quintessential global capitalist and reported how he brought a Saudi prince to a music company purchase. Those out of the room are out of the deal, Bannon told the paper. Once you make your way into the room, you stay. Financial disclosure forms put out by the White House reveal that in 2016, Bannon made $1.3 million. He earned nearly 500000 from Bannon Strategic Advisors, 125000 from Cambridge Analytica, a form the Trump campaign used, 191000 from Breitbart News, and 168000 from his film company, Glittering Steel. He was the first senior level appointed appointment announced by the White House. So certainly something to keep an eye on, uh, but I really at this point don't see any evidence that's solid pointing to Bannon leaving. Uh, and the very fact that he's like, it's a total lie, I would say he's probably staying. With that being the case, if he were to leave, it totally breaks the idea that um, uh, Trump is not influenced easily by his family, by Ivanka, people like that. And like I said, I'm going to look into further this whole uh, Kushner uh, banning thing. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I'm hearing things like, you know, Ivanka wanted this, this strike in Syria. I'm sorry. I don't believe that Trump is that weak, that his daughter says something and he's like, okay, fuck it do it. I, I think that's a whole bunch of bullshit, but we will see. We are going to get answers to these things. And that is what is so fascinating about the time that we are living in. I am the hard bastard. Thank you for watching. And he practiced the lizard style. The lizard is a very agile and nimble style. It enables a man to climb like a lizard. Oh.